Well, we finally got around to watching a whisker away. Hinode, sunrise, attack! Yeah. It's all about cats and it's coming at you in just a moment with four of us in the studio at once. Wow! Wi Fi Radio Extra! Uh, konnichiwa and welcome to another episode of Kawaii Fi Extra and this time we're talking about a wonderful little film which has dropped on Netflix. Um, and we've got four of us in the studio today. So many. There's so many of us. D is back, of Hello, course. I'm alive. Just You're, barely. Just barely. <laughs> barely. We have Loz, who you probably heard last episode. Hello again. And now you get to listen to Aaron's dulcet tones. Yay. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> so we finally got around to watching this after, as, as you probably heard over several previous episodes, talking about it. Whoops, I'm t- bringing the That's wrong you. microphone. That's I'm not you. used to controlling four <laughs> mics. This is terrible. So, you might have heard us talking about this in previous episodes. We did want to talk about A Whisker Away when it landed on Netflix, yes. but we've all been so flat tack. We promised it and it didn't happen, and I'm sorry, that was kind of my fault. No, it's not your fault. It's all of our fault. We all stuffed up. But we're here now. We've we're watched it. Now. A month late. We've watched it. We've yes. We're in the game. We've experienced it. And I quite enjoyed it. And we watched it, so it together good. as well, which is always fun. It's fun Absolutely. watching anime with friends. It makes it, it so much is. better. It's so much fun. I actually watched it last night because I wasn't sure I'd be able to make it in time for the screening. And mm. when I found out we'd be watching it together again, I was so hyped to watch it because it's just so much fun. It w- it's so a good. really well animated flick. So look, um, let's basically get stuck into this because A Whisker Away is the latest outing from... Oh, what was the studio? It was um, Studio... Colorido. Colorido, who I believe did Penguin Highway and the recent Pokemon Twilight Wings short anime. So not much, but... I mean, they, did a damn good job. They, they have other stuff there as well, but they've mostly been a support studio until the last few years. Mm. Um, and the story is set in, as you'd imagine, Japan. Whoa. I know, I know. Um, and it's a middle school drama. So um, essentially the story focuses on Mio Sasaki, and she is in love with her classmate Kento Hinode and tries repeatedly to get his attention by transforming into a cat. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but at some point, the boundary between herself and the cat becomes ambiguous. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is probably the first big group session we've had watching anything. But w- what mm. was each of your initial impressions of the film? Oh, it was magical. Like, it, it, it's it got so many pleasant vibes and it just brings such a good mood when you watch it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when like when Aaron said when we were set, sat down to watch it, he when his reaction was, oh, I get to watch it again, and he was excited about watching it again, that immediately made me feel excited for the movie because when mm. someone watches something and then a chill to watch it again the next day, you mean, I mean, that's got to mean something. It's going to so, be really yeah. good. Yeah, and like absolutely. initially, I guess like my initial review is if you like Ghibli movie The Cat Returns, mm-hmm. mm. and then but you also like A Whisper of the Heart, the other Ghibli movie, and mm-hmm. you kind of fuse them together... Yeah, that's, that's what really you get. Cute. That's pretty much what you and get. And it's great. So it's very heartwarming. It was and very cats. fun as well. Like, mm. uh, I mean, they all don't four take of us seriously. And it was just, it was very beautiful. It was funny. Like, it, it was. was. It was really moments. funny and fun yeah. and very middle schoolerish. Yeah. Now, like full disclosure: all four of us are cat people. Absolutely. So <laughs> I think some of us maybe more than others because I maybe have my cats tattooed on me, but that's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's well, fine. all right then. <laughs> <laughs> Not to flex <laughs> or anything, <laughs> but maybe I love my cats more. That's I a lie. Oh wow! Just laying down the law. As much. As anything in this entire Watch world. it, Carl. I'll steal your cat if you're not looking. Yeah, keep away from Liger. No. <laughs> um, we should post pictures of Liger to everyone. We should. Our, our mascot. He is. Uh, Don Ligoroni, as I call him when he's being nasty, because uh, he <laughs> clearly belongs in the mafia. Mm. Um, so, look, th- this was a film which was directed by uh, Yunichi uh, Sato and Tomakaya Shibayama, um, who I believe both have actually some pretty extensive experience themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So, Junichi Sato is... Is, um, a very prolific uh, magical girl director and he's yes. actually done two seasons of Sailor Moon so that's mm. awesome very good. Um, as well as he was the director of Princess Tutu which is one of my favorite series of all time um, so he knows what he's doing when it comes to like sparkly kind of magical um, anime centered around you know middle school girls and um, that's exactly what this was and he did a great mm. job so 
Yeah, very much so. I was also surprised to see in his repertoire is Pie Brain, The Puzzle of God. <laughs> what? Um, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, 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 that was a series back from 2011, 2012, um, which had, I think, about 50 episodes or something. Oh. But was it a Magical Girl series? No, no. Okay, um, but sometimes <laughs> I feel like I have a pie brain too. Let's be real. Yeah, it, it was, um, it was <laughs> definitely... sweetie pie brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, Got him. It was uh, a more of a sort of mystery sort of detective style show. Mm. So very different. Um, he's all also known for actually doing the art uh, department, being in charge of the art department for the end of Neon Genesis films. Oh, wow. So, like, that's... Jack of all trades. Hey. Jack of all trades, yeah. <laughs> so, look, I mean, he's got a lot behind him and it shows in the way that this story is told because it's really beautifully done and it's... You know, it progresses at a very fast pace, and you feel like you've been watching for quite a while. God, I and thought it had gone for so long, and it hadn't. Only and forty-five I was minutes like, will have gone. I was like, I'm having a great time, but how long have we? This is like a whole day thing. Mm. I think, like we, when we were watching it, we were like, how long has it been? Has it been so long? And it wasn't like a negative thing no. of, oh, this is taking ages, but more there'd been a lot of plot development mm-hmm. and kind of rise and falls and a lot of progression. Yeah, they really yeah. fleshed out the world and the characters, and like you. You weren't left with questions as to where this was going or who anyone was because mm. you understood exactly where the story was going and they fleshed it out really nicely. I think um, one of – I love Makoto Shinkai and mm. this has a lot of Makoto Shinkai movie feels. So uh, the Your Name director, for example, and also Weathering With You, which came out mm. last year. But something I I hate about his movies <laughs> is they always have that kind of bittersweet – and Ghibli does it as well, but that like yeah. bittersweet kind of drop-off ending that just kind of doesn't – doesn't get you as far as you want it to go, particularly with the romantic couple. But this yes. doesn't do that. No. And that's great. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting you mention that because the other director, Tomataka Shibiyama, he's known for The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, was in charge of the animation department for that. Oh. Also in charge of the animation department for Spirited Away. That makes so much oh. sense. Yeah. And uh, he, here's what kind of made me laugh a little bit when you mentioned that um, he, the, the bittersweet. This guy was involved for two episodes of Your Lie in April oh my God. as the episode director. Wow. And looking at those two episodes, I know they're two of the heaviest episodes of that season. This guy so knows drama. He knows, <laughs> knows drama. <angst. laughs> yeah. So he's, he's done a lot of stuff as well. But, I mean, let, let's move on a little bit from the cast and talk about the voice actors because mm. this was a pretty good cast. Yeah, um, the voice actors, I feel like they did a really good job. In particular, um, Mio, or Mugu as she's also known as voice actor, um, did a great job mm. of uh, making sure you understood that when she was in a cat form versus when she was in her human form, and then later on when something else happens, I don't want to spoil it, but you could tell that it was still the same voice actor, but there was difference enough um, yeah. that the character was still coming through differently, which I thought was really impressive. It has a lot of different personality in it mm. and, like, different tones, which is... For example, that cat storekeeper. The mask seller? In, yeah, yeah, the mask seller, sorry. I, I got there in the end. I knew exactly what I was talking <laughs> about. Guy, uh, it's from Jorah's mask, you know, brings you all the masks. Yeah. It's basically that. He also really, now that you've said Spirited Away, he really reminds me of the turnip guy. Yeah. Turnip, what is he? The Oh, the scarecrow? No, Turner? not the scarecrow. The the guy that the radish spirit. The radish spirit. That's what he oh, is. Oh yeah, who's visiting the uh, the one with the plant on his head? I actually okay. Confession time. Never seen spirit. No. Away oh, from bad. Oh, I know. Sin. Stop the um, podcast. That's fine. But but I got the, the mask seller. Kind of gave me like evil no face vibes. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Actually, that. also that maybe they had a love child and he turned into kind of a cat mask seller man. Also, he grew up being taught by the mask seller from George Mask. It's a weird fan fiction. Wow. I can get behind Whoa, it. Oh, yeah, I could. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I've seen crazy shit. Sure. I know what I'm writing later. I have seen Spirit Away. I'm like dying inside. Aaron. We've done you a disservice as friends. You're hurting me. We have. It's my well, favourite so movie sorry. of all time. That's what we're doing next. All right. Okay. We, well, we've done Spirit Away, but I think we could just do a Kawhi Fi Extra to it. show Aaron <laughs> his first experience of it. I've seen Tales of Earth Sea. Oh, Ooh. Um, I haven't seen that, so. Yeah, me either. It was. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I've played Nino Kuni. I'd like to think that counts. No, it does not. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's my baby. Yep. Um, I've only one thing to say. This to is you. an unforgivable scene. <laughs> it's okay. We can we can save you. It's we can save you. We can introduce you to all these wonderful you people. You can be taught. 
It's okay because he can at least let us know exactly what's going on when it comes to the Fate franchise. Oh, yes, so. 100%. True. Okay, Aaron. So, look, I mean, all the voice actors who are involved in this all have actually a pretty big repertoire of previous work. Um, they do have, like, the, the main roles are given to the younger voice actors, and they do have then some more tenured actors in there, um, both in the English and the Japanese version, mm. actually. Mm. Yeah, um, I watched the English one last night before coming here and watching the Japanese one. And honestly, both of them had great casts. Like, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly who the voices were, but they were just so well done and they portrayed the emotion and they just carried the entire movie really nicely. Mm. And the English dub only came out about, oh, I think about two weeks ago Yeah, it was well. delayed due to COVID. Yeah. I really want to watch the English dub. Um, it's got Jeremy Lee in it, who's um, Mio's the main girl. Um, mm. And she just did... Um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but the um, the main raccoon from BNA as well. I think she's in Dora oh. Hedoro as well. So she's doing a lot of Netflix dubbing at the moment. I'm literally yeah. watching that, like the main character. Yeah. Yeah, the little raccoon. Oh, oh uh, Michuri. Yeah, Mi- yes. Michuri. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, I've, that's really I've, hard. She's in that as well. I've actually got the uh, the full list of her work up there. She is Noi from Dora Hedoro as well. Yeah, so she's um, Dora Hedoro. She's doing BNA. She's in Persona, which is very important. Very important to you. Um, Koto <laughs> Nijima? <laughs> And Aaron. And Aaron, sorry. Um, was Pen Pen in the recent Netflix dub of Neogenesis? We don't talk about that. We don't, but <laughs> like that's wow. um, Red Blood Cell in Cells at Work. Hey. So there you go. The, the, she, she's got quite an extensive list. She was in a race as well as Aiyuri. Oh, wow. um, she was Sailor Venus in Sailor Moon Crystal, the <gasps> oh, reboot. Yeah. The, the dub sense. voice cast for mm. this is incredible. It's also got Christina V in it as well. She's one of my favorite English voice actors. Like, yeah, it's just, it's a really good cast in general. We did mention, obviously, that the art style of this show is very, I, I guess you could say, Ghibli-esque, uh, Makoto Shinkai. It's got that big budget, the beautiful, shiny um, effects on the water, the lights, you know, the god rays, if you will, throughout <laughs> things. Beautiful. The early scenes when you see all the silhouettes, mm-hmm. like the thing leading into everything. Which literally looks like that scene out, the opening scene from Spirited Away. Oh, which- yeah, Aaron the scene I did not know. like. <laughs> I, okay, I've kind of seen it in passing, not 100% dedicated to it, so I kind of know. <laughs> but um, yeah, fully this movie, uh, like if you told me it was directed by Makoto Shinkai, I would have been like, yeah, I believe you. Like it mm. looks like Weathering With You, it looks like your name. It's got that CG sparkle that oh, his man. movies have to it that really just bring it to life. And particularly like when you're animating water and such like that in Whisper yeah. Away when there's rain and when there's water on the ground, it just looks so like glittery and dreamy and magical and like Makoto's Shinkai's is like that too. The animation as well for like several points throughout the film is really beautiful. Mm. Like Aaron pointed mm. out the way um, the mum turns her head from the side to yeah, the front. That and scene it, with the st- we had to yeah. go back because I was like, hang on, I missed it. I just want to watch that again. And we watched mm. it and it was so beautiful. And when they're walking in the door and the camera is like leading up closer yeah, the camera to pans, them. Absolutely. Yeah, the camera pans. They, they also at a couple of points changed from standard lenses into fish lenses during a shot, which, mm. you know, one, incredibly difficult to do that on a camera as it is because yeah. that requires a lot of people well two people on a camera to, <laughs> to do it um, or you have two cameras next to each other filming it and then you swap it in yeah. post but to do that for an for animation, animation is yeah. incredibly yeah. difficult it makes right. it feel so real when you're mm. watching a movie that has uh, techniques that you would see in a normal well not normal in a in a real life movie in live action film that yeah. you would actually see a cameraman do and when you use that in animation it makes the animation feel so natural and real life and it's just it really combines everything together so I love seeing that as mm. well so even if you're just into animation maybe you're not super into like a rom-com comedy drama um, even a little magic if you're not into that you might be interested in just watching it for the animation honestly yeah it's definitely it's well a masterclass. Um, also, we should, let, let's uh, mention the characters because there are some actual really good characters in Very this. Good. Obviously, we do have um, Mio Mugi, who is also known as Taro when she's in her cat form. Very cute. Um, who's, I, I think that's probably the most realistic depiction of a teenage girl I've ever seen. Oh my god! In an anime, Absolutely. I mean, yes. admittedly, Western teenage girl. Mm. Yeah, but like even then, when like, uh, we were saying when we were watching it. So often you see a high school girl, I mean, they're middle school, but a middle school, high school girl in an anime and they, they're they people that don't exist. Like they mm. act like a anime character and they don't translate well into an actual human person. Whereas Migo actually, she feels like I, like me when I was a teenager, like yeah. I really identify with her. Like Dan and I were like, 
I've I did done that. that. <laughs> I've done that so much. And she was and so erratic and funny and sloppy. Yes, which yeah. was absolutely me as a high schooler. <laughs> I was the. S- I didn't care about uniforms at all. Well, that's also how she got her nickname in there because mm. Muge is not her actual name. It's Mio, mm. and Muge stands for Miss Ultra Gaga and Enigmatic. <laughs> that's pretty Beautiful. fitting. Yeah. Uh, that, that's. Uh, ooh, I wonder if there's any other ways you could change that for the translation because the enigmatic I don't think is enough. I think it needs to be more exciting, more exuberant, more energetic. More energetic. Yeah. <laughs> and she is. She's she's got this like bubbly energy that you can really only get when you're like a 14 year old mm. who's just madly in love with a classmate. And Absolutely. She, yeah, she acts like a teenage girl, and it's great. It's really refreshing. And, and she is in love with uh, Hinode um, Kento, who is her classmate. Who you know, he's the typical Japanese he's a boy. Sweetie. He's sweet. He's and very soft. sweet. He is soft. He's a very soft boy that I would protect with my life. Mm. Absolutely. I think he's like skyrocketed up there as a favorite close to Hal, to be Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. And you've got a Hal tattoo. Yeah, so I know. <laughs> that's saying a lot. <laughs> Woof. Mm. Um, but he, he's one of those characters who they've given a chance to develop him. Um, they, you know, you see his the, the face he puts on for school compared to the face he has at home. You mm. know, one of those, you know, people who doesn't share what's going on in his life with others around him. And as a kid, a lot of us would have identified with that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, in opposition to um, Mio, he acts, again, very standard teenager of an actual real life person. He doesn't express his feelings. He doesn't know how to deal with them because he's 14. Yeah. And when... um, Mugu comes in as a cat and like hangs out with him and he expresses she expresses feelings as a cat and snuggles all up to him and then he <laughs> tells all the secrets to the cat because that's what you do when you have a pet you, you do. tell them your secrets yeah if my cat ever becomes a human I'm absolutely screwed <laughs> that, cat, <laughs> know everything. that cat knows so many secrets they know everything about you well the other thing about Hinode is you find out that his dad died and his family's mm. got all this pressure on him to mm. become the man of the house. Yeah. Mm. So from that, he's decided that he can't really express himself and rather he just has to fit into this role that's been given to him. I have to do what mum yeah. says. Yeah, actually, on that note, Aaron, uh, talking about the parents, the parents and all of the problems that are happening at home also feel very mm. natural. Like um, Mio's got her, like her mum walked out when she was a kid and now she's got this new stepmom she's having to deal with and dad's trying to make it work and... They're yeah. trying really hard, <laughs> and you, you know, so she's trying to get together with it, get like along with her stepmom, but doesn't really like her because yeah. she's 14. Of course, she doesn't like yeah. her yeah, stepmom of off the not. bat. That's very standard. <laughs> and then there's obviously the best friend as well, but Yori. well, you've got Yori, um, the best friend, and, and then you've also got Hinode's Sumi? best friend as well. Mm. I think his name's Asumi. As- I think it's Asumi yeah, too. As- is Sami? Isami? Isami. Isami. Uh, yeah, Isami. Isami. Right, there we go. Um, and he, the, they're both in the background supporting them and you just see them getting closer and closer. I and love it's it. kind of a bit like, oh, that's so cute. Hmm, what's all this then? Nothing. They're like the fed up best friends in the background as they try and like watch their friends fall over each other and keep getting into arguments and like yep. oh my god just get together already and <laughs> just, yep. just yes. stop it <laughs> it's very good but actually on that note so the the way the film ends it it is very well done it it fits the way the story's been delivered mm. it resolves pretty much all the conflict i don't think there was anything really left hanging no, after I'm all not that. at all Happy your threads were it tired. was really good but the way that they ended it was particularly good and mm. aaron you were saying that you you have to watch the credits you absolutely have to watch the credits i mean it sort of leads you into the credits with a couple of scenes mm. but like they don't skip between like the scenes and the text like you have them at the same time and just the way it's done, the delivery of it all, it changes the pace from the movie, but it does it in a fresh way so that you don't feel like the whole movie, like the ending is just, oh yeah, now I have to sit through 10 minutes of them wrapping everything up. It's it's exciting and it, the way it's done, it allows it to cut directly to the parts you want to see so yeah, that absolutely. you can understand how it ends. Yeah, it's not rushed, but it's presented in a fast way that doesn't feel like it's just taking its time. So, no, absolutely. That's exactly yeah, it. it's yeah. really well done. And they also did, um, it's quite funny because during the outro, neither uh, Sasaki uh, Mio or Hinode Kento have any voiced parts, mm-hmm. but all the other characters do yeah. during oh, the, yeah. the, those <laughs> outro credits as no, well. No, no, the very first part with uh, Kinako. Ah, touche, touche. Where she says, Kinako likes me now. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's the that's well that that's true. But when we get to the proper like when there are credits on the screen, um, the others do then talk. Yeah. Um, but our main our main characters don't. Um, though it's the the way that ends the the end of that little mini tale which wraps everything up is really cute. It's really you have to satisfying. watch all the way to the end. Mm. Mm. All is it the way to the tail end. is in T A I L. Oh. oh. Get out. Oh no. Okay. Bye. No. 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 no, no. Stay. Please stay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, complimentary. Um, but look, you should definitely check this out. So A Whisker Away is available on Netflix in both Japanese and English. No matter where you are in the world, there are subtitles in, I think, 36 languages for it as well. Wow. So you can okay. definitely so check many. it out nowhere, wherever, where, wherever you are. <laughs> I'm getting my words good tonight. It's great. Um, so adventure, very family orientated. I don't think there was really anything in there that would kind of make it hard for kids to watch either. No, no. and something that... Deanne mentioned as well is there was a chance for a panty shot and they didn't do it. No. Uh, yeah. And it was just so refreshing to see an anime that's not just like, oh, this girl's tripped over, therefore you have to see a panty. And it was it was nice. Like she's in middle school, she's underage. This is a family friendly, yeah. kid mm. kind of focused magical story. So it's very it's very, it's very G, pure. Actually, I'd say it's yeah. G-rated. Yeah. Well, it's it's a TV PG, yeah, uh, at yeah. least for American rating. I think obviously check your local guides. Yeah. It'll come up it's on your Netflix. It's probably PG for us. Maybe yeah. it's for like a little bit of supernatural scary. Yeah. I would say. yeah. That's yeah. it. And yeah, look, the mask, Marcella, he scared the, me a little he bit. He is so. very scary. <laughs> yeah. Actually, can we take a moment to talk about the mask seller? Ooh. Because he's a very important character, the main he, antagonist. He is creepy as. Every time he came on, I was like, my skin's crawling. I don't like no, you. No. So that, that's why I immediately thought of again the mask seller from Majora's mask. Because he's got mm. this very unnerving kind of in for himself. I want to sell you something. I'm going to take your soul kind yeah. of away from yeah. you. Kind of creepy vibe, particularly with the yellow eyes. Yes, mm. but the way he does it is he doesn't tell you what the price is. Yes, he's one of those Until sellers that's late. like, oh yes, you can have this. I'll determine the price later, so don't you worry about See, it. See, this is a great lesson for kids. If someone doesn't tell you what something's going to cost you, don't take it. Don't it's take a terrible it. idea. Now, kids, listen to me. If a cat comes up to you and a gives you God. a mask and for free, just don't take it. Don't take it. <laughs> it's going to be a bad time. Or at least remember that your family loves you. Just yeah. remember yes. that your family loves you. Oh, and and remember that there are better things than being a cat, but not many. I mean, it might be a fun experience for a short period. Yeah. Like, hands down, I would do it for oh, like, a week or two. I'd absolutely be a cat for a week or two. I'd finally catch up on all the sleep that I don't know is just oh. fit to wear, right? <laughs> Sun sleep. Without oh. getting burnt. Oh, yeah. That'd yeah. be great. As long as you're not well, a white cat. You just said something very important mm -hmm. mm. for the movie, and that is the recurring theme of sunshine. Mm. Um, and something that um, uh, the boy says to... So what's his name again? Kenode. Oh, Kenode. Sunrise. Yeah. And he, he, he says to um, Taro, the Miu, when she's in cat form, oh, you smell like sun sign. And it's just the most beautiful mm. thing. So pure. It's so and cute. And it's like, yeah, it's this recurring theme of like sunlight and warmth and it's just really soft. It is very pure childlike romance. Yes. Mm. At the heart of it, very it sweet. is very pure love that kind of, even though has some trials thrown at it, still survives at the other end and it's still just as pure and happy. Which, and which I think is why the sunshine resonates so much with mm. it because sunshine is very happy and pure. I think even if you're not a huge romance fan, yes. if you've ever had a connection to a pet, this movie is definitely made for people who've had pets before or have a pet because it's mm. just it really shows you that love that you can have mm. for animals and it's really beautiful. Well, it's kind of got like an anime Disney vibe. Yeah. Mm. yeah. We're like, oh no, the main character turned into an animal. Because Disney hasn't done that before, and then you know they interact with their love interest, and then things it happen. Wow, wow, we mm. it's good. E either way, we all enjoyed it. So, yeah. so good. definitely it so watch it. I can't wait to watch it again. Beautiful. So look, definitely check it out while you can. It's going to be on Netflix indefinitely because it is a Netflix original. So mm -hmm. we'll be right back after this. Kawaii Fi Radio. Well, that is where we have to leave this episode. We've done a lot of anime watching the past fortnight. More is coming as well because we're about to subject ourselves to something horrible. Uh -huh. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh -huh. we, we, we mentioned this at the end of the last episode, but we are going to go and subject ourselves to the live-action Death Note. Really a crime. 
this is a, this is what we do for you, dear listeners. This is what we do. We put ourselves through pain and anguish and you know disappointing American make remakes. So you don't have to. Yeah, yes. pretty much. I watched this last night. Oh, oh yeah. why did you oh, watch no. it last night? I didn't think I'd make it in time for today to watch everything. Oh no. Poor Aaron. Yep. Um, well, look, if you enjoyed what you've heard today, please head over to our Facebook page and join us over there. And, of course, hit that like and subscribe button if you're following us on YouTube. We'd love to have you on board for the rest of the shows that we've got coming up. And there is a lot coming ahead. So next episode is Death Note, as we mentioned. But the girls will be getting together to do a very special Idol episode. Woo-hoo! I'm so- very excited. Yeah, and you'll get to meet our new presenter, Farah, this week as well as part of the net upcoming episode, which will give uh, you a bit more of info on our now expanded operation team. We can't believe we've got six of us on board now. So many. It's so many weebs. Yeah. So not enough weebs. How many weebs can we fit in this podcasting recording studio? Um, I probably only I the other two. I was going to say, we could probably fit both Kenny and Farah in here. So. We'll hang someone from the ceiling. From oh, the fan? we could hang Liger from the fan. No, no. that's animal cruelty. That's, that's animal cruelty. We're not doing that. I'm making that. a time machine again. <laughs> no. Okay, well, you've been listening to Kawhi Fi Radio Extra. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, watch, watch the anime. anime.